Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for a new military video. Today I want to talk about one of the most advanced, expensive and controversial machines ever made, the F-35 Lightning II. As I just said, this is one of the most controversial aircraft ever made, mostly because of the high price and the troubled development. So today in this video I want to analyze every aspect of this machine so we can check what it can actually do before judging it. And who knows, maybe it's not so bad as you may think. Before starting we have to consider an important information. This aircraft was created to be a real multi-role fighter and to solve any kind of mission. For this reason we have three variants of it. The A variant for the Air Force, the B variant with the vertical takeoff and landing capability and the C variant for the Navy and for the aircraft carriers. Let's start checking the overall information. This kind of aircraft has a crew of one, so just one pilot, is made by Lockheed Martin and the cost is quite different depending on the version. As we said before, we have three of them and as you may notice, the price is much different. The reason? Well, don't worry, during the video you will understand why the prices are so different. We have a cost of $78 million for the Air Force version, $101 million for the B variant and $94 million for the C variant. So remember, the A for the Air Force, the C for the carrier and the B for the vertical takeoff and the landing variant. The F-35 is being produced from 2006 and until now they built 535 of them. Depending on the variant they were introduced in this order. The first one was the B variant, so the vertical takeoff and the landing, in 2015. Then the next year in 2016 was introduced the Air Force variant and the last year in 2019 the C variant for aircraft carriers. And now if we check the overall dimensions we can already starting to notice the first differences. The three variants have almost the same length, you can find a 15.7 meters for the A and the C variant and just a little shorter, 15.6 meters, the B variant. The height, also here, we can notice the difference is not so high, we have 4.39 meters for the A variant, the B variant is a little shorter, 4.36, while the C variant 4.48. The C variant is so high mostly because the landing gears are stronger to resist against the catapult force needed for the takeoff. And now the biggest difference, the wingspan as we can notice, the A and the B variant have the same wingspan while the C variant has much larger wings, 13.1 meters against 10.7 meters. And of course it's the same for the wing area. We have 43 square meters for the A and B variant and 62 square meters for the C variant. And this is where you can find the biggest difference until now. But why that? Well, it's not so difficult to understand. The A variant is made for the Air Force and can take off from a very long runway, so it has all the time needed for the takeoff. The B variant has the same wingspan, also if it has to take off from a shorter runway, because it has a completely different system for the takeoff and landing, and we will analyze this specific system later in the video, so don't worry. While the C variant is very similar to the A variant, but of course it has to take off and land from a very short runway, because it's adopted on aircraft carriers. For this reason it needs more lifting power than the other variants. And to achieve an higher lifting power we need a higher wing area. And another very interesting feature of the C variant is that the wings can fall to save space on aircraft carriers. Another difference between the A variant and the C variant is the air refueling nozzle. While the A variant has the air refueling nozzle on the top of the fuselage, the C variant has the nozzle on the right side of the nose. So as a fast recap, until now the main difference between the A and the C variants are the landing gear. While the A variant has just one wheel on the front, the C variant has two wheels and a stronger landing gear needed for uh, the takeoff from the catapult of an aircraft carrier. Then we can find a larger wingspan on the C variant and foldable wings to save space on the aircraft carrier and a different position of the nozzle needed for the air refueling on the top for the A variant, on the right side of the nose for the C variant. But what about the B variant? Well, this one is a completely different story and it needs a little more working on it. Even if the overall dimensions are very similar to the A variant, so the Air Force variant, the final aircraft is completely different and all because its main feature, the short takeoff and the vertical landing. 
In fact, this aircraft can take off from a very short runway with sky jump, or even vertically if the payload is not excessive, and land vertically. And this feature is something that you can usually find in helicopters, not aircraft. So this is why it's so different compared to the A and the C variants. This makes the B variant of the F-35 a very versatile machine with the capability of take off and land from any kind of platform. But how it can do that? Well, the system is not so easy. First of all, it can change the inclination of the main engine from horizontal to vertical. Then just behind the cockpit we have a second fan that open up before the landing. And then under the wings we have two more thrust to stabilize the aircraft during the landing. And thanks to this complex system, the aircraft can achieve this awesome result. Of course, on one side, as we said before, we have a very versatile aircraft. But on another hand, as you may notice, the space needed to add a second fan and all these systems will make the aircraft heavier, taking space inside the machine. But don't worry, of course, during the video, we'll deeply analyze these aspects. All the variants are powered by a Pratt & Whitney F-135 turbofan engine with a total power of 109 kN. The F-35 can reach a maximum speed of 1930 km per hour or Mach 1.6 and a cruise speed of 1000 km per hour or Mach 0.8. The service ceiling is 15,000 meters and the rate of climb is 228 meters per second with a wing loading of 525 kg per square meter. And now we can check again the main differences between the three variants. Let's start with the range. The A and C variants have both 2000 and 300 km as range, while for the B we have a lower range, 1800 kilometers and it's the same for the combat range 1240 kilometers for the A and the C variants and 935 kilometers for the B variant and now checking the internal fuel you can immediately understand why the range is lower on the B variant in fact we have 8280 kilograms of internal fuel for the A variant 6120 kilograms for the B variant and 8960 kilograms for the C variant even if i think it should be obvious why there is a difference here, I would like to give an explanation for who is new to this kind of argument. Taking into consideration the F-35A, why there is a difference in the B and the C variants. The B variant, as we said before, has the capability of vertical takeoff and landing. But just because of this feature, most of the internal space is adopted for the other engines. And so we have less space for the internal fuel. On the other side, the C variant has larger wings. And maybe you don't know that. But the fuel is not saved only inside the main fuselage, but also inside the wings. So having larger wings means having also more space for fuel. And if we check the empty weight, also here we can notice something interesting. We have 13,150 kg for the A variant, 14,730 kg for the B variant, that of course it's heavier having more engines for the vertical takeoff and landing. But even more interesting, the C variant is 15,690 kg. So the Carrier variant, even without the engines present in the F-35B, has an higher weight, not only for the larger wing spoon that we have mentioned before, but also for the stronger internal structure needed to bear the stress received from the catapult during the takeoff. The maximum takeoff weight is 31,800 kg for the A and the C variants and 27,200 kg for the B variant. Also here is not surprising that the maximum takeoff weight is lower on the B variant because of course it needs to be lighter for the short takeoff and the vertical landing. And about the payload also here is not surprising that the A and the C variants have 8160 kg while the B variant only 6008 kg. The thrust weight ratio for the A variant is 1.07, the B variant has 1.04 and the C variant 0.91 while the G limits are plus 9 for the a variant, that is the best one, 7 for the B, just for what we mentioned before.
4 and 7.5 for the C, mostly because of the larger wings, very good for lifting and endurance, but less for the G limit. And we finally reached the third and the last part of the video, where we analyzed the avionics and weapons of the F-35. Of course, the F-35 has a stealth design, made to reduce the radar cross-section and be invisible, we can say like this, to the radars. But this feature is not always present, but don't worry, I'll explain very soon what I mean. Then we have an ASA radar, electronic warfare system, a missile launching detector and a targeting system. Of course we also find the usual chaff and flare dispensers. And now we finally start with the weapons. The first one is the gun, a 25mm rotary cannon, and also another of the main difference among the three variants. In fact, the gun is internally mounted only on the Air Force variant, so the F-35A has the gun mounted on the left side of the fuselage, while the B and the C variants mount the 25mm gun in an external gun pod. Then we can find six external hard points under the wings for drop tanks, anti-air missile, joint attack munitions, and other weapons. But to transport these weapons, you have to pay a price. In fact, transporting weapons outside the fuselage, under the wings, makes the F-35 not stealth anymore, so you have to lose the stealth features to increase the payload. But if you want to keep the stealth features, you can still use the two internal base with four launchers available. Four launchers means that you can choose four weapons among the list on the right of the video among air-to-air -air missiles, air-to-surface missile, anti-ship missile, anti-radiation missiles, guided bombs, dump bombs, cluster bombs, you have a huge choice of weapons, but you can choose only four of them. As example, for a multi-role mission, you can choose uh, two anti-air missiles, like the AIM-132, and two bombs, like the 450kg JDAM, Joint Direct Attack Munitions. Or for an air superiority mission, you can use uh, four IM-120 anti-air missiles, for example. But of course, you have a much higher choice if you use external hard points, even if you have to lose the stealth features in this case. Or you may use both of them, you can maybe take the anti-air missiles inside the internal bay and the bombs outside. After you attack the enemy targets, you don't have the bombs anymore, so you have again the stealth features, and save the missiles inside the internal bay for self-defense. The most important thing to understand here is that you have the stealth features only if you use the internal bay, without external weapons. That makes a huge difference in the amount of payload you can transport. And the overall review finish here. Finally, it was a very long video and actually quite complicated because even if we are speaking about a single machine, it's more like we have three of them. I hope the video was not too long and enjoyable for all of you, but most important that I give you enough information to understand how this machine works, how it was made, for which purpose and if it's good or bad. In my humble opinion, this machine actually is good. I know maybe you do not agree with me, and if not, let me know why, but my idea is that the machine is quite valid. It was designed to achieve any kind of mission, and we have even three variants of it. Maybe someone can point out that it's very expensive, but if you think about it, there are three different variants of the F-35, one for the Air Force, one for the Navy, and one for vertical takeoff and landing. And I'm almost sure that designing three different aircraft would be more expensive than just one that you can use for all three of them. And not only that, you can choose the variant you need more. For example, in my country is adopted the B variant because we don't have aircraft carriers big enough for the C and we do not need the A variant, so we just need the B. You can just purchase the variant that fits more your needs and it's still a new generation aircraft with stealth features. If you don't need them, you can still use the external hard points with a good amount of payload, and I think it's also better for maintenance and the spare parts. The parts because they can be exchanged among the variants, and the maintenance because you don't have to train the mechanics for different aircraft, but just one that is almost the same with just difference here and there. But this is just my opinion, of course. So let me know what you think, if you agree or not, and leave a thumbs up if you liked the video, subscribe if you are not subscribed yet, and see you again next Saturday with a new content. Bye!